Hi everyone, this is Ethan Dre with Be Creative Studios Video Tutorials. In today's tutorial, we'll be covering the layers panel. We're going to be covering creating new layers, duplicating layers, deleting layers, the visibility of layers, and we'll also be covering the move tool as well. So the first thing we want to do is set up our new document. So we're going to go up to the menu bar and we're going to go to File, New. Notice it is also keyboard shortcut, Command N. We're going to name this file layers panel all right and our preset is set to us paper which is fine for right now just your standard eight and a half by eleven and we're gonna hit ok all right so that creates our eight and a half by eleven document and by default we have our white background and it is locked that lock means that we cannot edit this background layer at all so unless we unlock this layer it's gonna stay the same just plain white eight and a half by eleven so the first thing we're going to do in our layers panel is create two new layers. There are several ways to do this. The first way I'm going to show you is just by going down to the layers panel where you see this little icon that's a piece of paper with the bottom left corner folded up. If you click on that, you'll notice that an empty layer appears in your layers window. The reason I know that this layer is empty is because it has the white and gray checker marks which indicate transparency. By default, our layer is named layer one. So to rename that, I'm just going to double click layer one and I'm gonna rename this red circle. And we're also going to be creating a new layer named blue square as well. So the other way to create a new layer is we can go up to our menu bar in layer, new, and we can click on new layer. So you can also hit command shift N and that will also create a new layer. Now notice we have more options pop up whenever we use this method. And we're just going to name that layer before it's made. And we're going to name it blue square. And we're just going to hit OK there. So we have our two empty layers. Once again, they're empty because they have the white and gray checkered box. OK, so let's put some imagery on these layers so we can start working with them. I'm just going to do a basic square selection with our rectangular marquee tool and I'm going to choose a shade of blue here and I'm going to go ahead and fill our blue square in. Now notice we have our eye to the left of the layer that indicates the layer's visibility so if you click on that it's going to hide that layer. This is good because it allows you to hide layers if you're working with many layers so you can navigate throughout your document a little bit easier. It's also good if you're unsure what is on each layer. But that's why we always name our layers so we know what each layer consists of or what image is on each layer. So we're going to select our red circle layer and we're going to change to the elliptical marquee tool. We're going to make that selection and we're just going to fill that square in with a shade of red. So notice that we can't see the entire circle. That is because the blue square layer is on top of our layer window or our layer panel. The layer that is at the top of the panel is going to be the layer that's closest to you or closest to the foreground. So if we start to click and drag and rearrange these layers, notice that the visibility of the red circle changes because the red circle is now at the top of the layer panel. Once again, if you want to see the layer below your current layer, all you have to do is click on that eye and hide the visibility of that top layer. We're just going to click on that eye to bring the red circle back, and we're going to cover some of these settings in our layer panel. The first setting I want to go over in the layer panel is opacity. This is the level of transparency of each layer. So if we drop this down and drag the slider to about 50%, Notice that the opacity is lowered and we can start to see through that layer or see what is behind or underneath our top layer. I'm going to return that opacity back to 100%. And to the left of opacity, we have normal with a drop down arrow. Now when we have this drop down menu, these are considered all the different blending modes that you can set for layers. These are a lot more useful when it comes to photography or digital imaging or photo editing. But for instance, it changes the way that the layer is shown. So if we go to overlay, notice that it just has the shape or the value of our layer, but that blue square underneath is shining through. 
This is just one example of many of the blending modes which we will cover in a later tutorial. The next thing I want to go over is locking a layer. So by default we have our background layer locked, but let's say we have our layer perfectly edited, perfectly positioned, and it's exactly where we want it and we don't want it to move. So all we're going to do is obviously click on this little padlock and that way we lock the layer that is selected. Once that layer is locked, we can't edit the layer, we can't move it, we can't add to it or anything until we unlock it again. Now let's say that we wanted to duplicate these layers so we have two red circles and two blue squares. There are several ways you can do this, but the quickest, easiest way is just to click on the layer and drag it back down to your Create New Layer icon. Notice that by default, the new layer is named Red Circle Copy. So you might want to rename that layer to Red Circle 2 or Red Circle B. Now we're just going to do the same thing with our blue square layer, except we're going to take a different approach to this one. To duplicate our blue square layer, we're just going to go to Select in our menu bar, and we're going to go to Select All. We can always hit Command A, which is a lot quicker and more efficient. Once we have the marching ants around our document or our layer, we're just going to go up to Edit in the menu bar and Copy. You can also hit Command C. This is going to copy whatever you have selected on that layer. We will then return to edit and go to paste, which is command V. And by default, our layer is named layer one because we do not currently have a layer one. We weren't technically duplicating the blue square layer. We were just pasting those pixels from the blue square layer. So we're going to rename that to blue square two. And we're going to start to move these layers around a little bit. So the way we move our layers in Photoshop is the Move Tool, or Keyboard Shortcut V. And we're going to go over the settings with the Move Tool up in the top of our application. So the first setting we have Auto Select. Auto Select allows you to click on layers within your document and move them. Without Auto Select checked, we would have to manually select each layer we wanted to move within the layer panel. For instance, if I wanted to move this blue square in the top right, I wouldn't be able to unless I selected it within the layer panel. Each designer has their preference with the move tool. I toggle back and forth between auto select and not auto select depending on the amount of layers or project that I'm working on. Notice we also have layer and drop down. We can also auto select by groups which we will be covering here shortly. The third setting we can control with our move tool is show transform controls. A lot of people prefer this because you can see the bounding box around each of your layers and it makes it a lot easier and quicker to transform or scale down or rotate your layers. I prefer to keep show transform controls unchecked that way I don't accidentally move the anchor point or resize or rotate anything I'm not trying to. Anytime I want to transform or scale anything I just use the keyboard shortcut command T. The next thing we're going to do is select multiple layers at once. So we can do this several ways. We can either select the layer that we want, hold in shift, and select the last layer that we want. This is going to select all the layers in between as well. Now if we wanted to select individual layers, all we're going to do is hold in command, and that way you can skip over layers that you do not want selected. With that being said, let's return to our layer panel and move towards the bottom of our layer panel to the folder icon. This allows us to create a new group. A group essentially allows you to organize your layers and it keeps things a lot less clustered. Once again we're going to hold in command and we're going to select our red circle layers and we're just going to click and drag our layers over top of our group one. Now our layers, since they're tabbed over, are inside of our group one. That way when we hide our group, the layers are hidden within that group folder. The visibility of the groups are similar to the layers, whereas they hide everything within that group or folder. You can also rename your groups, just like you can rename your layers. Now the last thing I want to cover is with the Move tool, we return back to Auto Select. I mentioned that we have a drop down menu with Layer. Once we change it to Group, whatever layer we click on within a group it's going to select that entire group or folder and move all the layers within it. The last thing I want to cover today is deleting your layers and groups. 
you can always just click and drag them down to that trash can icon or you can hit delete or backspace on your keyboard. So today we covered creating new layers and renaming them. We covered duplicating layers and locking them. We went over opacity and visibility. We also went over deleting layers. We touched base on the move tool and we covered auto select by layer and group and we also covered show transform controls. That's all for today. Thank you all for watching. This is Ethan Dre with Be Creative Studios video tutorials and please check back for more.